Hello everybody. So today I have a video for backing up your Plex server application data. Now this doesn't back up the media that you're streaming or sharing through Plex, just the actual server's registry and then the app data, well, the app data of the Plex media server. So like what you've watched, the thumbnails you've set, uh, any ongoing shows or movies, like the, the playback history. Uh, so I'll have a link for this script in the description of the video, but there are a couple things you'll need to change that are specific to your server. Obviously this applies to Windows Plex servers and not Linux Plex servers. Um, this script has basically created these two files here. There's the registry and then the zipped applications folder. Uh, and you can schedule this with task scheduler to run whenever you want it to run. <clears throat> Depending on the size of your library, the application folder may be either smaller or larger than this here. So you'll have to consider that with where you're sending the files and how long you'll want to keep them. So to go over the script, this command right here is going to set a variable for date. Basically that's how I'm getting these 2021 underscore, well, today's date. Uh, the next command here looks for any files under this Plex backup directory. So you'll have to change this location to wherever you're sending the files. For me, that's H drive, Plex backup. And then any files older than 30 days will be deleted whenever this script runs. So depending on how frequently you run the script, you could modify this. If you run it every day, you could maybe even set it to seven days or something like that. Um, but that's up to you. Again, for this command here, you'll want to change this part right here to the location that you're sending the files. This part right here is just the name of the file. So I have Plex underscore, and then this right here pulls the date from that variable and sets it to the file name. The sequence of commands you can leave as is. Some of them may not be running on your system, but basically it will check for any Plex related services and stop them. If, it, if it's not running, it just moves on. Uh, this command right here will actually zip the Plex app data folder. So this is what we're grabbing. And then for this part, just change the location to wherever you're sending the file. And then this is the file name. So we'll have Plex underscore data underscore date dot zip. This last command starts the Plex service minimized since we had stopped the services before zipping everything. Uh, what I have noticed is if the script has been run, this Plex media server tray icon may not appear, but you'll still be able to stream uh, from your Plex server. So it may look like it's not running, but it is actually running. So once you've come through, and updated this to point to basically whatever's on your file system. Uh, the next thing will be to open task schedule scheduler. And one thing I should actually point out, um, if you end up creating the file yourself, the file has to be called dot bat. So if you're going to do that, You would just do this new text document grab the full thing if you have file extensions enabled so view file name extensions this shows the dot txt on the end and you'll do whatever you're calling it my script dot bat so this is now a bat script file if you don't have the file extension shown When you're saving the script, just save as, select all types, and then change the name of the file to myscript.bat. So there you go. That, those two ways of creating the script. From task scheduler, you can create a task select run whether user is run is logged in or not 
and then check the run with highest privileges for triggers. This is up to you. It's we're doing on schedule and then basically however you want to set it. So as you can see, daily, weekly, monthly, and then the time and date specification is set here. If you set to weekly, you'll be given or monthly. You're given additional options for which days you want to run it on. So I'm just going to leave this as is because I already have a task created to do this. For actions, you'll want to browse to where you've saved the script. So there's my Plex data script. And that's pretty much it. You would just give it a name. And you'll have to enter the password because you are setting this so that it runs whether you're logged in or not and with admin rights. So I'll delete that since I already have the task. Once the task is created, you can run it to test it. So the task is currently running. Because I already have this stuff backed up, it's just going to overwrite these files. If you run it on another day, obviously it'll just have additional files with those with that date appended to the name. And again, depending on the size of your library, this could take either a couple minutes to run or quite a bit longer. Once the task is completed, you should see the operation has completed successfully. And then, like I said earlier, the Plex media server tray icon is not showing, but if we go to Plex, I could still see my library. If, if the server wasn't running, we would have my pinned items here showing the yellow caution sign indicating that the server was not running. Um, I've also tested this earlier and I was able to stream from a completely different system uh, that was just remotely streaming from this computer. If you want the tray icon to come back, you would just do this. And as you can see, it's already back. You would only ever have to do this when the script runs. So if you have any questions or even improvements, you can leave them in the comment and I will update the script accordingly. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful for you and thanks for watching.